Recently I've been having a problem with my Bamboo Lab X1C 3D printer where it was feeding the filament to the extruder and when it got there it couldn't seem to grab onto the filament and then it would just retract and it would do this over and over again. Upon taking apart the extruder assembly I noticed there was a lot of gunk on the extruder gears and this could be the cause of why the filament isn't extruding properly. So in this video I want to show you the process of how to replace your extruder gears in the extruder gears assembly. The first thing we're going to need is to go to the Bamboo Lab site. And in this case, I have an X1C, but they're also available for the P1. So if we go to the X1C series and we'll go to extruders, and here you'll see a few components for the extruder gear. The main one that we're going to use is the hardened steel extruder gear assembly. There is also the complete assembly, but that's probably not going to be needed in most cases. You're just going to need to replace the extruder gears. In the case where you have a P1S or a P1P 3D printer, you may want to install the hardened steel extruded gears so that it can allow to print more exotic materials such as carbon fiber filaments. This is because the P1P and P1S come with steel extruder nozzles and they're not suitable for these harsher materials. So once you've received your hardened steel extruder gears, we can then move on to the actual installation process. You probably want to home the device first. So we can go to the settings page and then just click on the home button. This allows the machine to home to the center. And from here, we can make minor adjustments either forward or back, or left and right. And we can also drop down the build plate to give us some more working room. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, which is PCBWay. There was a time where I would do resin 3D printing at home, but I got to a point where I could no longer deal with the toxic liquid resins and harsh cleaning chemicals, especially with a young family in the home. And that's where I found PCBWay. I could now use PCBWay to print the miniatures without the mess, and honestly, I'm probably just going to sell my resin printer now. But resin printing is not the only thing that PCBWay can do. They have an expert team ready to take your hobby maker projects to a more professional level. PCBWay can do CNC, sheet metal, electrical PCB boards and assembly, and of course 3D printing in various materials including metal. Their online tools allow you to easily upload your project files, specify requirements and get a quote. So if you're looking to elevate your work or even explore bringing a product to life, I encourage you to take a look at PCBWay and see what they can do for you. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this channel and now let's get back to the video content. As for tools for this process, I really recommend that you have a set of tweezers like like these as this will help a lot with removing all the cables. There'll be three main cables we need to take out first and with this smaller cable it'll have a little tooth on the top that you need to push down so you can pull out. When removing these cables just make sure you're pulling from the actual connector and not the wires as you may damage the connector if you pull the wire out. The next thing you're going to need is a screwdriver. In this case, I have an electric screwdriver, which this helps a lot. So find the right size and then you will need to remove the two screws that hold the nozzle in place. When you remove the nozzle, just give it a light touch to make sure it's not hot. And then you can wiggle it out of place and pull directly down. Once it's free, you should have the complete nozzle assembly in your hand. And you can just put that to the side safely. We need to remove one more cable, which is for the extruder gear assembly itself. Now there usually is a bit of glue on this the first time, so you need to pick it off first, and then you should be able to get the cable out. And then we need to remove the filament tube by pushing down on the base and pulling the tube up. There are three more screws that hold in the extruder gear assembly itself. One at the top, one in the middle. And before we remove the last screw on the bottom, we need to first loosen this screw that holds the filament cutter in place. And then we want to loosen enough so that we can move the cutter out of its position. And once it's free, it can just hang down the side. We can change our tool bit back to the bigger size and then remove the last screw at the base. Of course, make sure you're putting all these screws somewhere safe so you're not going to lose them. And then to remove the extruder gear assembly, all you need to do is gently pull it out. And it should come out in one piece like this. When you get your replacement extruder gear set, it should come in a small box like this. You can see what they should look like when they're nice and clean. So now we need to start disassembling the extruder gear assembly. We have four screws that hold the top shell in place. And we can begin by removing these. I have this little magnetic mat, which is really handy for making sure that screws don't fall away and get lost. So carefully remove all the screws and put them to the side. Now all you need to do is gently pull the top plate up and it should release itself. 
It may require a little wriggling around to get it free. You can also see the bearing that's in that top plate, so make sure that you don't lose this bearing. Before continuing, we need to loosen this screw at the top, as this will loosen the spring, allowing the active gear to move a bit more freely. Just don't remove this screw completely. With the spring no longer under pressure, we should be able to remove the driven gear. Typically, they may be really stuck like this. If you're finding that it is stuck, what you can do is get some object that you can put the extruder gear on and then tap it out from the other side. In this example, it's already dropping into the tube, but it gives you an idea of what I mean. With the driven gear released, now we can remove the active gear. And this again is where my tweezers come in handy, so just carefully remove this and put it aside. If we take a closer look at these used gears, you can really see how much gunk has collected on them. And this is about after a year and a half of use. And again, on the left side we have the new gear, and on the right side we have the old gear. Now to assemble everything, our process is just reversed. So we're going to begin with the active gear and placing that in the correct position. And then we can just tighten the screw again on the top. Not all the way, but just a little bit so it holds in place. And before you drop in your driven gear, just make sure the bearing is still in place. And then carefully fit the gear in place, which you may need to rotate around a little bit until you feel the teeth engage, and then it should fit together. And now we can completely tighten the top screw. And this should fully engage the spring of the active gear. The final step for this part will be to put the cover back on. Again, checking that we have the bearing on the other side for the gear as well. So this bearing should align with the shaft of the gear. And also this hole will align with the pin of the active gear. So simply align the two up and press it back into position. And then we can go around and add our screws back in. and of course, tighten them all back up. These electric screwdrivers are a really handy tool to have, and you can pick them up on Amazon pretty cheap. They're well worth the investment. With that all reassembled, just have a look around, make sure that nothing is missing, and that it all looks good. For the next step, we need to assemble it back into the tool head. You'll want to align the internal gear to this motor gear on the tool head. So make sure it's in the correct orientation and it should just push back in place quite easily. Simply wriggle it around a bit until it fits. We can then put in our screws for the top, the middle, and the bottom. Then we can align the filament cutter into the little slot that it moves into. And while holding that just in place, we need to tighten the screw back up. With this screw engaged, it will prevent the cutter from falling away again. It's a good idea just to test that the movement is there. While I'm here, I'm also going to install a new hot end assembly. And this is quite a straightforward process. All we need to do is make sure the cables are not pinching on anything, and then simply push it up into place and drive in the two screws that hold in the hot end. Sometimes it does require a little wiggling around just to get that first screw in, and then the second screw is usually much easier. All right, we're almost done. Now we just need to connect all these cables back up. So there'll be four cables in total. This first one is the one that had the bit of glue on it for the extruder gear assembly itself. Then we have this little tiny cable. There is a little cable holder just in the side here. You can see me pushing it back in place. And again, these little tweezers are really helpful just for grabbing these cables and trying to align them to the pins so that we can push it in place. When you're doing it with your fingers, it can get really frustrating because they are really small to work with. So having some tweezers like this is really helpful. And then we can just tidy up the cables a bit by putting them behind this cable holder. And the final step will be to put the PTFE tube back in the top and to put our front cover back on the tool head, making sure that it is securely fitted. It's probably a good idea to power cycle your machine at this point, so simply turn it off and then turn it back on again and wait for it to boot up. Once it has booted up, we can go over to the printer settings, go to the filament tab, and you might need to unload the current filament by selecting it and clicking on unload. It will go through this process of heating up the nozzle and cutting and retracting the current filament. And to test that everything's working, we can click on a filament and load it. And again, it will heat up, push the filament through, and then if everything's working correctly, we should see the filament start extruding through the nozzle. So if everything's been installed and is successful, it should be extruding through the hot end just like this and ready to print. All in all, it's not a hugely difficult process. It may look a little complicated with all the screws and cables that you have to take out, but really this should only take about 20 minutes. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've learned something and if you found value in this video then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Until next time, thanks for watching.